Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Krunos Lapadic. Uh, I work here with Red Hat. I've been here for almost a year now. I'm originally from Croatia, where I worked as a Python developer. But uh, I really wanted to get it into the continuous integration and uh, delivery and came here to work. And since then, I've been working with a lot of tools and libraries to, which help us uh, to, in, in our work with the CI. And, uh, but one that really stood out and that's really helped me a lot, that which I've been using pretty much daily, is the continuous infra environment setup or Concha ENV setup in short. Well, since I've been using it a lot and also contribute, contributing as much as I could over the, these times, I, and since you've already seen it in action with Ari, I thought about uh, putting together a little nice pr presentation to kind of introduce it uh, and uh, sh show off what it can do. So what is Concha ENV setup? Well, to answer that, uh, we, I'll first go back to why it was made. Uh, we actually made it to, uh, to actually replicate existing OpenShift instances so we can have it in a local environment run it, experiment with it, uh, the redeploy it however we want, and try out different components. Now, now since then, uh, since we made it to be as generic and flexible as, as possible, it's actually, we're actually able to support a plethora of different uh, environments and usages. In, in short, it's a generic way to pretty much automate the setup of a CI or CD environment. Uh, it can be de deployed on a mini-shift instance, that's the original in intent to have your OpenShift locally, or an existing op OpenShift inst instance. Also, with the newer versions, we can actually deploy it ex externally on an external VM, be it AVS or OpenStack or whatever, and have, have our, our little OpenShift cluster up there. Now, it's obviously used for setting up CI, CD environments. Uh, the key, key uh, note to take from there is that we are deploying infrastructure as code via S2I templates with OpenShift or in MiniShift, and also deploying Jenkins CI pipelines from pipeline as code, as code solutions as, such as HDSL, which Ari already talked about, or deploying shared libraries or Jenkins files and Jenkins templates so we can set up our jobs directly from code. As you can see, everything is meant to be in code, so we can test it, uh, improve it, uh, version it, and incrementally work on it and uh, see, have an oversight over it. Now, since Concha ENV setup is, can be set up in a variety of ways, the users can also be pretty various. From people who are just start starting with CI CD pipelines and just want to see what it's all about, it's great because there are already working examples. You just run it and you already have a set up a, a nice little environment which you can play, play around with and use as a basis for your next steps. To developers who want to be able to actually develop their CI environments on their local machines or on something external so you, they can share it with their uh, colleagues and kind of uh, ping, pong, ping pong their ideas between them. Uh, to teams that pretty much want to, wait, um, to autom automate their setup of testing or production or staging environments uh, or whatever they need. So it uh, it's pretty much can provide uh, all of those uh, benefits all across the board. Now, the contrain setup is in its essence an Ansible playbook or pretty much it has a central playbook that includes, includes a variety of roles. Since it's uh, so modular, we, we can use them in, um, in many different ways, so to, so, which means including some roles and not including some roles. As you, as you saw, Vitari, he, he said, he, for example, uh, set up, didn't set up the prerequisites he, because he already have them, but he set up the mini shift and the pipelines and stuff like that. Also, one nice thing about it that we can actually include our own playbooks at the end, so we can with, with hooks. So, which pretty much means that, that we can set up our own playbooks, for example, for checking if, if everything is up, uh, adding our own stuff after, ev after everything is already running, uh, running some jobs, or just, uh, just uh, collecting some data if we need it. Now, it's 
the, the pretty, pretty much main point of uh, the Conchi Envy setup is to set up a local or external OpenShift open instance uh, with all the infrastructure that we need. For that, we utilize the OpenShift S2, uh, source to image templates to create resources such as services, routes, uh, of course, uh, images, uh, uh, deployments, uh, build configs, and stuff like that. Uh, also, the, the added flexibility that we bring to the table is the ability to actually customize those S2I templates. So you can use your templates uh, in a variety of ways for different uh, use, usages. Uh, so, for example, with Jinja2 templating, you can actually inject your Ansible uh, var variables that you define on, on the beginning uh, to, to have a different version of your own environment in, for different usages with, with minimal effort and minimal change. There's no need for duplication. Uh, also, the final product is, in our case, in, in, and in general usage that we tend to use, the, use them, is to create a Jenkins instance from those S2I templates. Now, that's not, uh, that's not a must, as pretty much nothing else is, but uh, it's a general usage, and it uh, tends to work that way. So. Uh, we, we are able to deploy Jenkins 2.0 pipelines from code, uh, whichever you, way you, you choose. So we support the Concha high level DSL templates. So those are pretty much very easy to, to, to configure YAML files, as Ari already mentioned. Now, pardon. Now, this is pretty much a general overview, overview of the components that actually get run. Uh, since, as I mentioned, you can pretty much skip any of these. Uh, these are the three general usage cases that we tend to uh, see the most. So the first one is a local one. When you want to set, set it up all on your local machine and run it from there. Uh, the second one is to, when you have an existing VM or on OpenStack KVS or or even local VM if you want it. Uh, you can prepare it with, with, that, with that, deploy the OpenShift templates, and set up the pipelines. With OpenShift, of course, it's the easiest one. You just uh, use the existing cl cluster, get there, and uh, go from there with the templates and the pipelines. Now, I'll go, uh, I'll go into, much, into a bit more detail with the first example. It it's, it's pretty much covers everything. Uh, well. When we are deploying to the local machine, we set up prerequisites, which means uh, we, we set up the nested virtualization, which is key for us to be, to be, be, to be able to actually run Minishift. We install LibWord if we need and other pack packages that are required. After that, we set up a Minishift VM. Uh, that, that VM can be customized to your needs. You can set your memory size and stuff like that. Uh, which you, uh, and you can have your different profiles, so you can run many Minishift instances if you need, like at the same time. And uh, also, th after that, we, uh, we process the OpenShift templates, so we can modify them if you need some uh, custom variables injected, uh, process them, prepare them, of course, verify them, and then uh, start deploying them. So you start building images, you start preparing de de deployments, the build configs, and everything. And after that, that's of course optional, you set up the Jenkins CI pipelines. So it's either HDSL or regular pipelines and include the shared library, libraries if you need. Now, you, most of you already, see, already saw this at Ari's presentation, but I wanted to illustrate that uh, Concha ENV setup is not uh, alone. It, it's, not, it's a part of its uh, ecosystem. So we, uh, we have, of course, the Concha MV setup. Then we have, in blue, uh, the Concha MV setup uh, sample project, which is there to provide uh, either beginners or people who, who want to see how, how the back best practices or HDSL are, is used. It's all there. You can see the shared libraries and everything. Then we have the infrastructure that uh, Ari expanded a lot. So uh, that's... Uh, it's, it can be used or can be skipped if you need it. You can run it alongside your own project, the, the yellow one. You can use all of those templates and the 
and uh, containers as part of your project where you modify them to your needs, it's pretty much uh, very customizable and flexible. Now, the infrastructure by default holds uh, a couple of uh, different uh, uh, templates. The main one is for the Jenkins masters and slaves. They are already prepackaged with uh, a lot of plugins that we use, uh, the libraries, and the best practices. Also, we have the helper containers for HDSL. So HDSL pretty much expects, expects us to have those containers spun up when we are, we are running the pipelines based on it. So it's Ansible and Lynchpin. Uh, Lynchpin is used for, Ansible is pretty much obvious, but Lynchpin is uh, also one in-house uh, developed uh, product of that uh, tool that uh, allows us to pro provision resources from pretty much anything, from Beaker, from uh, ABS or uh, whatever you need. Also, there is the metrics and report reporting containers. Uh, so it pretty much includes InfluxDB Influx that collects the metrics and Grafana that shows them. Uh, and uh, of course, there's a, there are container tools with Podman and Builda all already there, so you can actually develop, develop your own containers much more easy, easily. Now, the contract environment sample project is not, uh, it's not there to actually run your pipelines, but it's very nice to see how it's done. So uh, along with AG, HDSL, which we already talked about, there are already uh, examples of using the shared libraries that we also use uh, that are kind of kind of the middle ground bet between pure Groovy and Jenkins files that can be a lot of uh, lines of code. And uh, pretty, it pretty much means that we provide the, li the libraries and functions and functionalities uh, which are already baked in with the best practices so you don't have to worry about it and you use much less lines in your code and don't have to re repeat yourself so often. Now, since all of this is written in code, the next, the next log logical step is to actually set up a CI CD for, it, for, for this whole, of course. And here we have a sort of a nested thing because we actually use Conchain we set up to, to test all of these repositories, including the Conchain and we set up repository. The kind of nice thing about Conchain we set up that it, that, it, that it actually can be run from within a specialized container. This is not uh, meant for general usage, but for testing. Uh, for the testing it itself, it's kind, of, it's kind of neat that we are able to actually run it within a container to actually set up a mini shift VM inside of it and nest from there. Uh, one also nice thing is that we can actually use an open, st open stack uh, or ABS VM that's, a, that's external and run on country and we set up there, test, run our, all of our tests in a clean environment. And then if, uh, for example, something fails, we, we can just leave it there for everybody to see. You can send, send a notification, there, there's the whole environment, check it, all, check it all out. It's not just logs, it's everything there. Now, for future developments, uh, we'll pr pretty much uh, be following the, all the best practices and new developments of infrastructure as code, and of, of course also pipeline as code. Uh, we expect to have more advanced examples of HDSL and shared libraries, libraries as they develop further. As, and of course, as, as everything changes, this is, this is all pretty much uh, brand new stuff. And of course, as K-native components and operators come into play, uh, we will also have to keep that in mind and, all, and support them properly with uh, the Concha EMV setup. Well, in conclusion, the Conchain we set up uh, is a tool that allows us to repeatedly and reliably set up our environments just the way we want it, uh, and many times, as many times as we want it, pretty much anywhere we want it. Uh, well, the thing about working with uh, continuous infrastructure and uh, continuous uh, integration and, and de delivery is that you tend to communicate and meet and work with a lot, like whole technological ecosystems, all different methodologies and everything. And while it is really rewarding and fulfilling to actually be able to contribute and help the developers with their uh, projects, it can also be a really daunting task and uh, very time consuming. And I believe that a tool that actually allows you to automate part of that process and 
uh, actually allows you to not worry that, mu that much about the infrastructure and everything like that is, is a tool that actually gives you freedom to use your sk skills where they, where they are best utilized, to use your uh, creativity to help people. And I believe that contrain the setup is just that kind of tool. So that's pretty much it for me. If anybody has any questions. With, uh, with the containment setup. Well, that, that's the nice part. You, you can just run the already preset uh, environment and see how it works all together, and then uh, see it, how it re reflects on your needs and modify it from there and create your own project that includes or doesn't include or has your own custom containers that are either based on it or you just go from your own. You have the full freedom with that. Anybody else? Okay, thank you very much.